Well, hello everyone. I know you probably don't recognise me right now. I've got full glam on! <laughs> I have just been down to Lancome at Harrods Beauty in the Metro Centre and had my makeup done by Paolo Messer, which he's one of the like Lancome makeup artists. And sorry, who is she? Who is she? Anyway, I thought I'd film a little Q&A because I feel like it's been a while since we had a catch up and I put a couple of box, uh, question boxes on. I put one up a little while ago. I was supposed to film this video like a few weeks ago now and I just didn't. <laughs> so um, I had I have the question box from then and I also put one up this morning just for like a few last minute questions but I probably to be fair could have like been fine with the ones that I had before because there was quite a few but I'm going to skim through them see what we've got see what whether we've got any juicy ones and just yeah let you know what's going on with my life at the minute so let's have a look there's the, to be fair there's quite a few like wedding related ones there's a few just like general ones so I think I'll do a bit of a mixture just so that we've got like a mixture of stuff in there <laughs> obviously <laughs> okay we'll start off with some weddingy type ones because i feel like those are like the most popular questions that are coming through people want to know about the wedding plans and stuff like that um so the first one is have you chosen a color scheme for the wedding and i have um i won't be telling you what it is though <laughs> It's so like difficult not to just tell you guys everything about the wedding and stuff like that. And believe me, I do, I do want to share as much as I can. But I just want to keep some things like to myself and to like with within my family and like close friends and stuff, just so that it's like a nice surprise on the day for like the other guests. And then like when you guys get to see it, it'll just be a nice surprise then. Because I kind of feel like if I spill every detail, then it's not going to be like a surprise on the day. Do you know what I mean? So I have chosen a bit of a colour scheme and kind of the colours of the bridesmaids dresses, etc. So yeah, I have, but I'm just not going to tell you what it is. Sorry. <laughs> will you be taking Emmanuel's last name? I will be. Yes. Um, I'm kind of traditional like that. I know that sometimes people double barrel the names or they um, just keep their own surnames. Like I'm like, I think if that's what you want to do, like, great, more power to you. Um, I just, like, I will be taking Emmanuel's last name, so I will be leaving the Thorpe name because my current surname is Thorpe, like Thorpe Park. Um, so, yeah, I'll be leaving leaving that name behind and I will be an Inne. So Emmanuel's last name is Inne and that will be my surname when we do get married. So it'll be Jessica Sarah Inne, which I, th I quite like. It's, like, a nice kind of short name although the the one thing i will say is that it's going to be another name that i have to spell out because you will be surprised at how many times i have to spell the word thorpe um because sometimes people spell it with an f or they just spell it without an a on the end or you yeah you'll be surprised but yeah uh so my new surname is i n n e h in a so yeah i will be taking a surname do you ever wish emmanuel was from the same culture as you no, I don't actually. I think it's it's really like an embracing the culture. I've learned so much about um, kind of Nigerian culture, Nigerian, Nigerian food. You guys know that I've been trying to learn some of the dishes. And yeah, I just love like the fact that our two cultures are coming together and like we're hoping to incorporate some of that into the wedding itself. So it won't just be like a traditional English wedding. There will be some kind of Nigerian aspects to it, which I'm really looking forward to. But of course, that means there's like more research and more planning and stuff to do um, in that aspect. But like I say, it will be a surprise for the wedding. But we are planning on kind of like incorporating um, the two cultures. And uh, But to answer your question, no, I don't wish that I'm always from the same culture as you because I just think it's... I don't know it's just nice to have a different culture in the house and um the thought of like bringing our potential future children up as you know mixed cultures as well is really exciting to me and like I know it will be difficult and there will be some questions down the line and stuff like that but that's obviously something that we will have to tackle at the time and kind of educate our children on and there's still so much for me to learn as well in terms of the culture and yeah it's just all so exciting and just so nice to 
kind of embrace the culture and like incorporate it into my life as well so yeah i think it's i think it's nice that he's from a different culture to me but any thoughts of the style of wedding dress you would like i i do again not something that i'm going to be sharing online however i am going to try a dress on soon uh which i've seen online um by a designer and they are stocked in a bridal shop around the northeast um and i'm going to be trying that dress on soon and i'm very excited because if this fits the way that i think it's going to fit and look then i think it's going to be the dress but it's worth pointing out that i have actually tried dresses on already um so it was pretty like close to, well it was only like two or three weeks after the engagement that i was like i want to try dresses on so we went down to um, a place called wed to be um and tried a couple on and there was some really beautiful stuff but it just wasn't something wasn't quite right i had a very i have a very kind of specific vision in my head of the wedding dress that i want and i'm just really hoping that it like comes together on the day that i try this dress on because i found it and i was like that that i hope is my dress so fingers crossed by the time you watch this video i might have a wedding dress mad <laughs> we've got a couple of questions on like will i will we be moving house anytime soon before the wedding um the the answer to that is yes we are planning on moving house but not before the wedding it's just too much in terms of the cost of things um and just the logistics of moving house at the minute it's just not quite right but we do 100 percent after the wedding that will be when we start saving for our deposit and looking at buying a house together obviously i have my mortgage um so it will be a case of getting a, a mortgage together and kind of navigating that and we we obviously want somewhere that's a little bit bigger because i mean my house don't get me wrong was the perfect house for me to get onto the property ladder but it is only a one bedroomed house so it's not it's not big enough for us um and if we did want to expand and have children then you know it there's nowhere to put it in my current house to be quite frank so yeah um we are definitely going to be looking at um getting another house i don't know yet whether it'll just be a, a like i'm i'm not 100 percent sure yet it'll all depend on budget and where we are at financially at the time but i think ideally we would like to be in a big enough house that we can have all of our children in there because i think like to me getting a going from like a one bedroom to a two bedroom would be kind of what's the word counterproductive because i feel like i mean we have discussed we want more than one child so realistically we'd end up just having to move again <laughs> so i think ideally we want to get like a, a decent sized house where we won't have to move again for a significant period of time so it'll be like our next house will hopefully be our forever home so it in that aspect as well it's another thing that we have to kind of think about and will take a long time to find that home and just know what area that we're going to be living in and there's a lot to think about in terms of like moving house and where you want to like where we see ourselves living for however many years so yeah um so, but yes to answer that we are planning on moving house at some point just not before the wedding because it just doesn't make sense for us right now how did you find living with someone after living on your own for so long i can't <laughs> do you know what it is right i i get asked this quite often so i was single for a long time prior to meeting emmanuel and i was comfortable with it i was really comfortable with living on my own i was really comfortable with being single um me and emmanuel i guess kind of met almost by chance um i was very like I was very happy being single when I met Emmanuel and I think that has to be why it worked like and I think and I honestly think that that is potentially how this has all come together because when I was first single for a while because like growing up not growing up like from my first boyfriend through to like when I was first single like before the long period of being single I was like dating 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 boyfriend after boyfriend after boyfriend and it wasn't like i couldn't imagine myself being single and i never wanted to be single but i think that period of time that i was single really helped me learn about myself it helped me um learn to love myself as a person and like not in a 
not in like a big headed way, but just like learn to accept myself and realize that I don't need to have these things in my life and I don't need to be in a relationship in order to be happy with my life. So once I'd reached that point of like self love, I guess you want to call it, um, and then I met Emmanuel, I think like it helped me in the sense of like I don't feel like I need to work on myself psychologically anymore. Um, I had a lot going on for me in that period that I was single and I think getting into a relationship at, at that point would have been like pointless for me because it like I say I had a lot I had a lot going on in my like my personal life and I had a lot going on like mentally and I mean you guys know I've brought I've kind of touched on my mental health with you guys and I was in a really really dark place at some point in my life and now that I'm out of that I feel like I can really live my happiest life I feel like it wasn't that difficult to adapt to having Manuel move in because he just kind of slotted into my life and really kind of elevated it. So I I think if he moved in and was like a slob or like, you know, just didn't bring anything to the table, then I think it would have been different. But because of Emmanuel being the way he is, he's just so kind. He's so, you know, like attentive to like the house and stuff. He looks after the cars, like his main job like his thing is washing the cars and he has certain things that he just does and it wasn't difficult for him to move in because he made things easier if you if that makes sense so yeah I think that's kind of my answer to that it was almost like a blessing in disguise having because I, I couldn't have imagined a man moving into my house and like disrupting my space but then I guess if it's the right person who's bringing the right things to the table then it it kind of just works doesn't it so yeah are you thinking about giving up your caring job and solely doing social media full-time again um not at the moment no I am very happy you know doing my care job I have dropped my shifts to two shifts a week now um which to be honest I haven't actually noticed that much difference in the hours and the pay just because at the moment there's a lot going on for the company that I work for there's a lot more clients being taken on um which means that our days are even busier than they were before so honestly I'm 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 happy working for working in care it's a very fulfilling job it's very um it, it, and it is also very very difficult in terms of like physically mentally it's it is quite a draining job which you know if any of my girlies who are watching work in care or work in healthcare of any kind you know what I'm talking about and to be honest two shifts a week plus social media for me is more than enough <laughs> um because I kind of find that the day after I've done a shift I am absolutely knackered and drained but to be honest I, I don't see it I don't see me quitting my care job in the near future no I just think that I do enjoy it it gets me out the house it's you know it's a career that I have always been doing like I've, I've done care for gosh nearly eight years now eight years yeah so to and then obviously I did kind of do social media full time um, for a couple of years and that's probably where you guys kind of met me and stuff and like assumed that that's just all I did but, but then obviously I went back to care and I'm just I am enjoying it so yeah don't get me wrong it's hard it's stressful but it's fulfilling and I enjoy it so I don't think I'll be quitting it anytime soon um, but it's one of those things that I I know in the back of my mind that I could if I wanted to so I'm I'm very privileged in the sense that I can I could just quit that job and I would still be okay I'd still be able to pay the bills but like at the moment the money that I'm getting from the care job is going straight in my wedding fund so <laughs> so I'm happy about that <laughs> and then after that it will be going in the house fund a little bit of a soppy one here but when did you realize that Emmanuel was the one slash different to men you've dated before so this is a difficult one because obviously as I've said I was single for a long time before meeting Emmanuel but I have dated a few people and a few do we call them men boys <laughs> prior to that um and I think the thing with Emmanuel is that he I'm just so excited to see him all the time like when he goes to work or when I go out or something there's never like a dull moment there's never I mean don't get me wrong we've argued we've you know had our fallings out and stuff we've had our fair share of those but we always come back together and like work it out and stuff and I think just the like the fact that Emmanuel makes me laugh 
every single day. There's not a single day that I'm with him that he doesn't make me laugh in one way or another. Even when he's not here, like his messages or like he'll send me a picture on Snapchat or something and something will make me laugh. Um, but I think he's just so attentive to like, you know, it's just like little things like you can, I can just tell that he cares about me. So I think that's what, what it is. I don't know. I don't know how to explain like how I knew that he was the one, but one thing I will say is that my mum knew that he was the one. So she said that like she knew that this was the end game in terms of like dating and like Emmanuel was going to be the one I spend my life with. And I just love the fact that like my mum and like my parents and Emmanuel get on so well. Um, just everybody that Emmanuel meets, people always say to me, God, he's so lovely and things. And I'm like, I know, <laughs> he's mine. <laughs> so like nobody says a bad word about him. And honestly, he's just a genuinely kind and generous person. And I couldn't, I couldn't thank him enough for choosing me. God knows why he chose me, but, <laughs> but he, you know. Another thing that got me was that like when there was a meme or something on Twitter or on TikTok or something, and it was like, Re when you realise that the worst thing to happen in your relationship is not to be cheated on, or something to do with like a feeling of not worrying about your partner cheating on you, but you're more worried about them dying or getting hurt or something like that. And that is very much the case with me and how I feel about Emmanuel. Like, I am not at all concerned about him going out and cheating because I just know he wouldn't. He's not that type of person. But if he were to get hurt or like end up in hospital, the thought of it makes me well up and cry. Honestly, like the thought, like, I think I was watching Grey's Anatomy. This was ages and ages ago. I was watching Grey's Anatomy and it was when, oh, I can't tell it for, <laughs> I can't tell you guys in case you haven't watched a bit. A certain character died and I was like, oh my God, like one day, like one of us are going to have to experience each other dying before them and I was like I can't handle that I can't actually hack it so yeah I think that was kind of when I realized it was the one that I wasn't concerned about him being unfaithful or hurting me or anything like that I was more concerned about him dying which I know sounds really extreme but I think you got like does that make sense I feel like I'm I feel like that sounds like really bizarre but that's just how it is yeah <laughs> what is your fiance studying at uni he's doing he's about to finish his master's in project management so he is graduating gosh in the summer in the summer this year he's graduating um and then he'll be he'll have a master's in project management so hopefully he'll be going on to do that kind of work because in case you guys don't know he works in healthcare at the moment whilst he's at uni um and and yeah so he'll hopefully be getting a job in project management after that um, but yeah, you'll be graduating like in a couple of months, which is mad. So yeah, what else? Okay, let me go on to the current one because I've answered loads of questions from the previous one. Um, my partner may have our engagement party at the end of the month. I'm stuck with what to wear. Okay, so I was so stuck with what to wear um, for my engagement party. And I found obviously this, the dress that I wore was from Odd Muse. Now, Odd Muse is, it's not a cheap brand. I won't, I won't lie there. Um, it was something that I kind of, I had my eye on. I was like, I tried a few dresses on, but just nothing was quite right. So I get where you're coming from with that. But what I would do is go on TikTok and search engagement party dress and just scroll through, see what people are wearing, see what brands people are wearing and just have a little look around there. Because I sometimes think that searching for just white dresses isn't doesn't always come for like with the right things <laughs> so yeah have a look on tiktok there's loads of people who do little hauls um there's a woman there's a girl that i follow called helen crickety crickety Crick I, i'll pop her thing up here um but she's doing like a um wedding season or like wedding era dress hauls and stuff so um go and have a look at her profile and get some inspiration when are you planning to go to nigeria before or after the wedding we are planning on going after the wedding actually um so his family should be coming over for the wedding um here and then after the wedding at some point i think possibly after the honeymoon i'm not sure we will be going over to nigeria and doing i guess a little ceremony over there as well so i think 
it'll be nice to go over there and see where he's from and things so um yeah we will be going after the wedding i think it's just quite expensive to go so before the wedding isn't that feasible but then hopefully after the wedding once everything's paid for we should be able to get across there which will be so nice what happened to the 75 soft and strong challenges are you not doing any them anymore uh no i'm not actually <laughs> i know i was going to do my own um style of 75 soft and stuff i just i feel like i had got into such a rut of like these style of challenges and stuff and I wasn't enjoying it the way that I enjoyed the 75 soft the first time. However, I have been losing weight. I don't know if anyone's noticed, but <laughs> I have actually lost quite a bit of weight recently. And I honestly think that that is down to not posting it online. <laughs> and it sounds like a little bit harsh, a little bit like, what do you mean by that? But every time I post something about what I'm eating, how I'm going to the gym, like gym content or I don't know, just anything to do with like lifestyle changes and stuff. I'm always told by someone online that I'm doing it wrong or that I'm eating the wrong things or something like that. And it's really like demotivating. And, and I know that I shouldn't let comments like get to me. And I usually don't like, I don't like, it doesn't upset me or anything like that. But sometimes I think, well, why do I bother? like post like going through the effort of showing you guys what I'm doing to then just be told that I'm doing it wrong or I should be doing this and then sometimes when I follow the advice of people who are telling me I'm doing it wrong then I end up falling off and just I don't know I just think like the online diet culture is so toxic that I just don't want to listen to any of it I'm doing my own thing and it's working so I just want to carry on with that and just do it in my own time I think possibly when I'm kind of at my like I don't want to call it a goal weight but when I'm like feeling comfortable and you know when I feel like I've achieved what I want to achieve I will probably sit down and do a little like a video about how I did it and stuff like that but documenting the process itself is just so counterproductive for me because I end up always end up in a negative space with it and it's just not not worth it so yeah I'm, I'm not doing any kind of challenges or um stuff like that I'm just trying to live my life healthily and hopefully a bit of weight will fall off in the meantime <laughs> so yeah um but I think I'm gonna leave it there because I feel like I've been I've been filming for like half an hour now so I think that's enough because I'll start to bore you guys um but yeah let me know if you have any, request, any more questions in the comments and I will try and answer them down there. Thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. Go hit the subscribe button, all that good stuff. And I will see you in the next one. Bye, guys.